is up, everybody? I am your host, Shane Mallory, joined by my co-host, Ricky DeCosta. Tell the folks what time it is. Run it back. Time to run it back. This is episode number 38, and I forgot last time because we had come off of a little bit of a hiatus, coming off of another little short vacation, too, here as well. I had yeah, vacation. Yeah, you looking a little tan, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. getting out here, getting some sun, you know, right. a little trip down the wild. Because you need some color in your life? I need some color in my life, absolutely. I love, listen, everybody can use a little bit more color <laughs> in their life, man. That, there's no lying about that. But listen, before I go into all the nitty gritty, I mean, you had you had track meets with your kids too. Just to let you guys know, you watch out for these two little ones of his, man. They are going to be track superstars. You heard One it day. here first, okay? okay. I'm a win. master of predictions. But a uh, few different trips here, but we're getting back in the swing of things. The NFL season is coming hard and heavy. But please, beautiful people, you know what I'm going to say. If you like this show, please like, comment, and subscribe. We're looking for those. Five star. I'm holding up ten fingers. Five star <laughs> reviews on all major platforms. Okay, you know us at this point by now. So please hit us up with those likes. Okay, get us in the comment section. All right, like, comment, and subscribe. You help us grow. Okay, we're coming back at it hard, and we got to hit some of this NFL talk right now. So I think we talked about this last time. Mm -hmm. There was. There were some percolating problems going on with the 49ers. There's an issues with uh, Ayuk, uh, the contract situation. This has really reached kind of a, a fever pitch, a boiling point, I guess, if you could say. Mm -hmm. uh, agreements still haven't been met. Now, there are definitely some conflicting reports. There's some trade scenarios that are being reported out there. The Patriots, the Browns, the Steelers have become a big player in this trade. Now, it was also reported that apparently they could possibly reach an agreement by the beginning of next week. I'm not really sure what to believe right now, but let's just kind of delve into this what are your thoughts or what are you hearing about these trade talks and scenarios right now? So, obviously, you know, there's reports that the Patriots were interested, the Browns yes. um, and the Steelers, right? Correct. Those are like the three teams. And, and it seems like the 49ers really want to play ball with the Browns because they would want a Mark. That's Cooper the best back offer. Yeah. You get a comparable time. player and a possible draft pick, exactly. too, as well. But you got to think about Brandon Ayuk has a lot of leverage in this particular situation sure. because <clears throat> yes, the 49ers have him under contract for fourteen million dollars, um, but you're not going to trade for a player and not be able to extend him. Sure, right? Because Amari's on his last year too, right? Amari, if they were to get him, uh, yeah, one, one I'm not 100 percent sure, okay. one or two years, but he's on the shorter side of things. But Ayuk, you don't want to trade for that player, and then you have to franchise tag him. You want to be able to come to an agreement. So within those sure. negotiations, you'd have to think, if I'm Brandon Ayuk, where do I want to go? Yes, I want my $30 million, but do I want Drake May and a rookie quarterback that is not even starting right now? <laughs> or do I want to go to the Browns, which most players go to die? <laughs> they've been better. Well, going to the Patriots, recently. too, it's like you've been playing for like championship contention the last couple of years. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to a but bottom. But at least from an organizational too. standpoint, there's a lot more structure sure. there, right? Yeah. But the the Browns um, would be more of a like a situation ready to compete still, similar yes. to what he's used to. Speaking of competing, the Steelers, they got it together. They win nine games every single year. Sure. You could be that catalyst, right, to push them to 10, 11. Quarterback to situation the is a little, but I hear you. The, the quarterback situation yeah. is better than what it has been in the past. Right, so with that being the case, you're either gonna have Russell or you're gonna have you Fields. know Justin Fields. Yep. Either way, they're bound potentially for the playoffs. And if you're Brandon Ayuk, you, you get to play with George Pickens. Okay. Now, hey, pick your poison. Who do you want to double? And you got uh, Pat Fryermuth in the middle. Sure. So that's a lot of weapons. You got Warren and you got Harris in the backfield. Yeah. So uh, they drafted another running back too. I think his name is Kamani Vidal or whatever. He's apparently turning heads in camp too as well. Speaking of so. the draft, Wilson, right? He was drafting yes. uh, out of Michigan. Michael, I think he's, Michael Wilson. Is that um, his name? I might be confusing him with the Cardinals receiver because there's another Wilson there too who's yeah. young. But yes, but, I know who you're but talking a lot about. Of, a lot of potential Correct. there, right? Number two on Michigan, he was doing the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, Even um, though they didn't throw the ball a lot, when they threw, they threw to him a decent amount. So, and my boy Colston Loveland, remember that name. <laughs> the Steelers did start to rebuild their line. So there's just so much more potential. So if yeah. I'm a Brandon Ayuk, I want to go to the Steelers. And with the reports, we're seeing that there's a framework in place. So I think... That's where Brandon wants to go, okay. but now they're probably having to work out the compensation. And from reports that I read, it looks like the 49ers want a player back. And I think... What have the Steelers... What's the offer potentially from the Steelers so far? 
they, they have not spoke about that, but it, it just it seems just like from a interest. money standpoint, okay. uh, it looks like that's in place with IU. If I had to guess, this is 100% speculation, I think the trade is going to look like IU get about $29 million a year, mm. four to five years, about mm. $1 million guaranteed. Okay. Right? So it's going to be land him above um, uh, Jalen Waddle that got $28 million a year. Uh, so he should, he should be above that, but less than. Um, I like Jalen Waddle, but I think Ayuk should get more than Waddle. But I think he should he's get less than St. Brown. I agree. St. Brown or Ayuk, St. Brown is the clear better player. Correct. So I think that's where he land on a four year deal, maybe five year deal. 28, 29 right? million. Uh, maybe I think just about, less I think than about, 30. I think, I think what it will be is like 29 million uh, between 80 and 90 million guaranteed. I think that's probably going to be the structure of the contract. Knowing the Steelers, they'll probably be closer to the $80 million side. They'll probably give him an extra year, but then lower the guarantee. So it's that, okay. you know, back and forth. And I think if I am the 49ers, I'm asking for a second round pick. Right, I don't think they're gonna get a first for him because of the contract they have to pay. <clears throat> so I'm thinking it's a second round pick, and the 49ers want a player back that's a bona fide starter. Okay. Well, <clears throat> here's the whole other caveat to this: the 49ers are at a point now where they they may have reported this. They need this figured out now because arguably their best player, Trent Williams, is also holding out. He's sitting on the couch. No Trent Williams. I don't care what happens with IU. Mm -hmm. The 49ers are just not the same team. So quietly, the 49ers are in a very disastrous situation, it's right? It's definitely because contentious. Yeah, they, for sure. They saw, they listen, like I said, I said this all of last year. The NFC is going to be better this year, too. Well, that too. But yeah. separate from that, I said the CMC was going to get paid more. Sure. And mind you, he was Deservedly already getting paid so. $16.5 They bumped up his pay to $19 million. Yep. That's how much they worked him. And thank God he did that because now he's having a little calf injury and he's probably going to be out the rest of the preseason. Sure. Right? But reports are he should be ready for week one. Well, this also shows you really quick how why they were so... They were dragging their feet with the Debo contract a year ago because they knew now that this moment Bosa, was coming too. Bosa. With, well, Bosa as yeah. well. But then the Debo thing, they kind of dragged their feet because it's like, we're going to pay Debo now, but we got to figure out how you as well. But that's the problem. So next year, they got to pay Purdy. You got to take I, that's care the whole other thing of, too. Um, um, I have a feeling Purdy is the type of guy he might take a more team friendly deal. I'm not saying he's gonna. I'm not <laughs> this saying. This is a nice guy. I'm not saying he's so, going to sit there and take like Brock just shave Purdy, it. But, listen to me. Listen I don't think me. he's going to take the max. Listen to me. Brock Purdy has been getting paid $800,000 yeah. a he year. He is a bargain and then some. Okay. Absolutely. A year for four years. He's going to get his money. Now, yeah. listen. In the bigger spectrum of the world, that's a great amount of money. Of course. In the football world, that is peanuts. Pennies. It's peanuts. Yeah. Pennies. Yeah. If Tua can get $55 million a year and has only played one full season, Brock Purdy. Not only that, never won a playoff game. Purdy's never been to two NFC game. championships Brock and a Super Bowl. Purdy is gonna get at least fifty-five million a year for at least five years. Damn. So I think he's gonna end up in mm. that two hundred and sixty-five million a year. Where I think Brock Purdy will be gentle. Is that he will probably. Uh, uh, lighten back up on the guarantee. Money. He'll backload money too. Right. Maybe well, he'll have the money to go come and hit later on. In well, the year. so like again, you know, in the contract, I mean. Yeah. So like from a guarantee standpoint, you know, he could push for close to two hundred million. Maybe he lightens up and takes like one hundred and seventy, one hundred and seventy-five million. So that's what they. So can they do. can play around and shift the money where they need to. Yeah, exactly. Time. And they yeah, could yeah, yeah. and they could help him out by. I was giving actually him a watching bigger a whole podcast bonus. breaking that down too as well. Yeah, like it, how it, you can set these things. Up. Exactly. Yeah. Listen, you. You could pay him, give him a bigger signing bonus, just like they did with Jordan Love. Yeah. Right. So give him eighty million up front. Right. So yeah. you really rewarded him, and then you could play around with. His you can also space that signing bonus years. out as well, like I've learned too as well. So it's like yes, you have the signing bonus, but they don't necessarily have to pay it all at once. Like there's all these weird cap. Yeah, just, but then they should do it every year. Yeah, so if they yeah. give him eighty million up front, and then a, and a small salary the next year, that it's a part of the negotiations. Him, but yes, and you want to keep a player, you want to you could restructure it, make salary it's a signing bonus but then here's the thing you got to pay Purdy you got to pay Trent Williams he needs more money um and then and Trent Williams is just I'm sorry he's outside of Purdy obviously he's more important than Ayuk as much as I like Ayuk and respect his ability he's more important to the George team George Kittle's coming up again 
right? Um, Debo is one year out, okay. right? Because he shorter he signed a shorter deal, three or four, right. Three. So then, mind you, these are only the offensive players. The, the the 49ers are at a point they're gonna have to make some serious decisions, and that's why I said quietly they're in trouble because you your Super Bowl window may have passed because financially you can't keep everyone. So what's gonna happen? Is you can't have Debo making twenty million. You can't have uh, Nick Bosa making thirty five million. Can't you can't everyone. have uh, uh, CMC making nineteen million. You can't you have Trent Williams tra- making twenty million. Twenty five, yeah. twenty seven yeah. million. Are, You're gonna have to are high. listen. Tackles he are high. has been a linchpin in this offense, and he's he the is best arguing, tackle in the game. He might be the best player on the team. Yeah, it's 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 right? definitely debatable. So, and he knows he's, what, 35, 36, so he's got a shorter window, so you're going to have to beef up his money. Well, it's going to be shorter for more amount of money, so because it's going to be what, cap it's a two-year, three-year, so that's going yeah, yeah, to mess with your cap big time. Yeah, call it two years at... $50 million And he's going to get max. He's going to get the max at that position. He'll get so like a two-year $50 million. You're looking, at, you're looking at a guy who over the next two years at a minimum is going to count somewhere between 20 to 25 against your cap mm-hmm. in each of those years. That's mm-hmm. rough. So they're going to have to really reset, right? So someone's going to have to go. And I said this last year. What I would do, I would have paid Ayuk and I would have traded Debo. Right, but now you trade deep, you trade IU Debo, you're going to be 100% reliant on, and he's had one full season in the last three years. Mm-hmm. He's an amazing player, Debo's a good player, but he gets banged up. But he gets banged up the more you use him. So, therefore, the 49ers really might be in trouble because they're going to, um, other players are going to start to get expendable. Now, let's segue to this. Let's say, hypothetically, um, that IU gets traded. And let's say he goes to, okay, if he went to the Browns, obviously they'd be getting the best return because they'd at least be getting a player that's comparable. But let's just say that doesn't happen, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say he goes to either the Patriots or the Steelers where the return is not nearly the same. But they're able to re-sign Trent Williams and obviously with that move, is their super window closed if they trade Brandon Ayuk? It is because of what you mentioned earlier Everyone around them has gotten better. Even with like a guy like you don't trust in maybe the development of the guy they drafted, like a Ricky Pearsall, who by reports they've said it looks solid and can't. I don't know if he's Ayuk. I don't remember. Know if he's still know a the rookie. system right away. Still, he's still a rookie. Yeah. And uh, Ricky Pearsall is more like Debo than Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk is your deep down the field, extra so seat, pure route runner, win man on man coverage. Right. Mm-hmm. Debo is going to break tackles. You can put him in the backfield. You can put him in the slot. You move him. Around motion, Debo is you know a jack of all trades, and and the problem is he's very similar similar to CMC though is also he can do a lot of the things that Debo. That's why that's the pressure. The draw is so important because he's a clear. Uh, uh, he's a receiver. receiver. He is a receiver. You know, he's going to run yep. your deep post, yep. your deep crossing route. He's going to hit your That's corner Brock route. Brock Purdy's right? favorite target, too. Brock Purdy wants Ayuk. Like, he wants Ayuk to set. He yes. like throwing. So through. that's where, you know, yeah, that's why I think their window is closed because the Lions clearly got better. They fixed a lot of their issues on defense, right? The, the, the Packers are looking good. Right and guess what? Oh yeah, the NFC they're is going to be Jordan much Love, better. This but they're season. not paying anyone else. I know all that tech teams, all rookies separately, or not the, rookies, but young like first yeah, contract, first yeah, contract players. players yeah. But here's the bigger issue: they play in a tough division. The Rams, granted, they lost Aaron Donald. Oh, I like the Rams, but they sure. gained Puka. Cooper Cup is coming back. Um and uh, they have Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams on the best running back. They have Blake Corum in the yeah. backfield, so they have depth at running back sure. now. It seems like they, they drafted. Now listen, remember, the 49ers play in such a tough division. Absolutely right. You got the Rams and much they, improved, much improved, yeah. rebuild things. Look at what they did uh, last year. Exactly Look at what they did last year. And Cooper Cup is healthy. Yeah, Puka is taking off. Granted, might have a little bit of a knee issue. Yep. Um, but he had issues last year, and he would play through, like, everything. So it's just like, I think you can count on Puka for the majority of the season. 
barring a major injury. But like Sean McVay, hell of a coach. The defense should be good too. Should right? be improved. Sean McVay, yeah. hell of a coach. Love McVay. Then you have uh, Seattle. Seattle's greatly improved. I really like their coach in McDonald. And I think they have the offensive weapons and he's going to bring back the defense. Now, here's a little... They're figure their running game out a little bit, but I'm with you. I'm with uh, you. Walker, they got some receivers Walker for sure. And, um, and Charbonnet, right? Charbonnet, so they, they're, yeah. they got depth at running back. They got a Walker was better as a rookie, though. He kind of almost took a step back this past year. I, I, I don't think know what to, happened, I, I think he had to figure out the new yeah. backfield. It's and, tough, you man. Know, you know, like it's, an NFL it ball, you know? Agreed. I mean, that one year can do a lot to your body. But remember this. Um, Mike, Mike Donald, McDonald was the coach of the Ravens. Yes. Yep. When they played the 49ers, oh that God. was Brock Purdy. That was a stomp. Five interception yeah. game. That wasn't a game. That was an so, ass whooping. I think a big reason in hiring him, his defensive scheme seems to be the type of scheme to confuse one Brock Purdy. So I think those games... Cardinals should be better this year, too. There you go. Fully healthy Kyler Murthy, Mur uh, Murray, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. on that team now. Uh, they tried to Benson, the running back from FSU, who Benson, I thought was the best. solid guy. Yeah. So him and Connor, like, that's going to be a very... The yeah. NFC is going to be much better this year. The NFC West is going to be much better. The NFC North um, is going to be NFC much North better. The NFC North is going to be much yeah. better. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if they play the Bears, but the Bears are challenging. Now, also remember this, the 49ers play a first-place game. So they get they have to play the Chiefs. They're gonna play the Bills. Yep. Um, they're gonna play the Cowboys, right? Like there's some. Not granted, they're not scared of that, yeah. but uh, there <laughs> there's that? some yeah. tough games in there. Uh, they gotta play the Ravens. Yeah, I mean, and we right? saw we all saw, we saw what they did. Last time. Right, so yeah. they got a really tough schedule. So my issue is that all of these things surrounding the 49ers they may not be able to just plow through like they did last year. and Especially without a big play threat. And here's the thing. If you look at the Eagles lineup, they are very dangerous. And the one thing the Eagles did, they signed all their big names. So there's no continuity issue. We'll talk about the Eagles later. Right? I'm not as high on them as other people are, but well, yeah. Well, you know, listen, they're going to be good. They're talented. Listen, they are talented. Saquon, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. Um, here's what I'll say. If they can get a deal done with the Browns, I still like their chances. If they trade with either the Patriots or the Steelers, I tend to agree with you. I think their window is closed. I think the NFC is just too strong now. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got the Lions coming back. Uh, that was a young team last year who had just made it to the NFC championship for the first time. Now they brought that entire team back with that year of experience under their belt, combined with probably that bitter pill and taste in their mouth. I would watch out for the Lions this year too. That that's a team that's now listen, they're gonna be on a mission. Let's make it clear. They're they're playoff bound, they're gonna make the playoffs. Sure, right? Even if they lost that youth, they're a playoff. Agreed. Yeah. Here's the thing: this is how they can fix their Super Bowl issue. You trade Nick Bosa. That is the that's, move. You know that's not happening. But that is the move that could reset them. What did the, if you trade Nick Bosa? Are you? Are you're still to me? You're what not Super Bowl. Did the Kansas City Chief do? They got rid of their best. They got rid of Hill to keep their best weapon. defensive players, though. That, no, no, no. That, but yeah, so it's in reverse. You know, yeah. But they got rid of their best weapon. Now, I'm not saying their best player, Tyreek Hill, was their best no, weapon. Agree. Sure. So, you, they I gave agree. something up. Got two first-round picks. Well, according to the NFL reports, he is the best player. But go right. on and continue. You'll yeah, get there later. <laughs> right? Um, but here's what I'm saying. If you could trade Nick Bosa and get, and get two first-round picks, get a haul of picks, you can reset. You have to get younger. You have to get friendly contracts now that you have to pay Brock Purdy. If, but if my choice, I just got to tell you, but the choice is between trading Bosa and trading Ayuk, and I'm trying to stay no, 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 in contention. No, 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 no. Hold on. And Ayuk. Ayuk is gone. I'm assuming oh, Ayuk is gone. Okay. I'm saying next year, when they don't win the Super Bowl, what's the big move to make? It's to trade Nick Bosa. Nice. Trade Nick Bosa complete. Listen, trade him to the Carolina Panthers. Get two of their first round picks. Yeah, right? I just don't. Like, I don't think the Panthers. Like, I hear what you're saying. I just don't think there's. If you were going to trade Bosa, why would the Panthers trade for him? Like, if the Panthers add Bosa, that's not going to all of a sudden put them in. Oh, we're going to the Super Bowl now. Trade like, him you know to the Broncos. Uh, you would have to trade him to it. The only team that would want someone like a Bosa is a team that's like, oh, wow, we're kind of like, we're looking for that 
finishing touch or a piece that now may, takes us from contender to legit Super Bowl threat. Trade to the Broncos. They yeah, I mean, any pass or so. I don't see Bosa getting traded, though. I just don't. Listen, again, it might not happen, but you're asking me how you could fix their Super Bowl window. You follow the Chiefs model. You're going to have to start paying your quarterback. Um, you're, again, CMC is making $19 million. We'll get and more of that later, too, when we talk about the Cowboys and Dak, too. Yeah, but here's right. the thing. We forget about Fred Warner. He's making good money. Yeah. Uh, their cornerback, Ward, he's making good money. Sure. It, eventually, you have to sacrifice. And here's my thing. What did Bill Belichick always say? Get rid of them one year too early. Awards are getting, I know who you're talking about. Versus know, getting rid of them yeah. one you know, one year too late. Yeah. And so that's the move that can really change things for the 49ers. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, it's going to be interesting. We'll see. And it seems like this trade, all, all these trade and contract con- uh, negotiations are still going hot and heavy, and they're still going on right now. Yeah. So we're just going to see. I'd say if they can get Cooper, there's their window's still there. But if they trade Ayuk and they don't get a player that's comparable to him, I have to say, at least for next year, I think it's closed. It's also it also sets the 49ers up to really evaluate if they're going how much what they're going to do with Purdy long term because it's no secret Purdy likes Ayuk. If Ayuk leaves and all of a sudden Purdy struggles a little bit. That changes the whole contract situation around him. Well, listen, I, I hope uh, they're going to start targeting Kittle more because I think Kittle is underutilizing that offense and he's getting older. And so, to me, these are little things that you could do because they have a riches of weapon, but you have to get younger. Yeah. Right? And here's the thing. Eventually, you'll need a replacement for Trent Williams. You are. You are. Right? 36, you're just asking you for an injury. Well, it's just if you're sending out Ayuk, I mean, you just you got to try and get the best draft compensation possible. That's too late. You should have done that before the draft. No, but I'm saying for the future because you're talking about replacing How's that going to help your Super Bowl window? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your thing that you're talking about with Trent Williams. Just replacing him at some point, like you're just going to have to get future draft compensation. Um, But no, I think if they trade him, I think the window is, I think it's closing, especially with how tough the NFC is going to be this year. Moving on, though, obviously, the former producer, your brother was a Jets fan, our new producer is also a Jets fan, okay? And there was some news recently about the Jets. Uh, what can I say? They're smart individuals. I, I guess, yeah. Sure. Self-deprecating um, people. Yes, yeah. They're pessimists. That's what they're lifelong <laughs> pessimists. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson, I got into a little bit of a fray during camp, a lot of yelling back and forth. I know people like to kind of make that a big deal this time of year. To me, it's kind of just like it's training camp. It's hot. They're trying to get on the same page. Do gel back and forth on the same team sometimes. It's not a big deal. But – what do you think of that? First, let's just talk. Listen, it's again training camp. You're away from your family. You're, yeah. you know, you, Rogers. You're annoying. You're weird. You're making quotes all the time. All right, trying to make a aggressive. newspaper. It's a little aggressive. <laughs> that's, that's a little aggressive. Right? I got nothing against um, Rogers. You know, but ultimately, I think last year the team was younger and in awe of Aaron. And I think you've seen the maturity now with Garrett Wilson to say, look, this is. I didn't run the wrong route, right? Like, so let's get on the same page because we can't have issues. Dude, we got to get play a game right now before you start ordering us all around and treating us like you're, you know, the colonel. Yeah, no, forget about that. But it's, again, I, that passion says they want to get it right because if practice is the hardest part of your day, that means the game is going to be easy, mm. right? And so that's how, or it's just that day, but you, your week is what I really should say. That is how it should be. And I think Garrett Wilson is starving to be great. And let's make it clear. Garrett Wilson saw those contracts go out. He wants his 1,500 yards and 12 touchdowns. Okay. Right? And so he's got a lot of passion. And this is the guy that could take him there. So they, well, he's passionate about getting it right. So I don't even need to. I mean, if you want to look or if you want to reference the booster, you can. I already have a record and a prediction set in my mind. But let's just have you go through it. What, what you, we you want me to go through it? You can go through it. I already have my prediction. I am an honest individual. I'll tell you guys this I right now. Will... I got Jets at 10 and 7 making the playoffs. You got them at 10 and 7. Jets at 10 and 7 making the playoffs. Well, they're absolutely going to make the playoffs. I can tell you right now they're going to win the division. I can huh? tell you that right now. Okay? okay? So, the first game of the season is the 49ers. Even though the 49ers are going through all of their turmoil, right? I'm going to give them that win. So, the Jets start the season 0 and 1. But again... If Trent Williams is not playing, we got problems. If Where's CMC, it's in it's in San Francisco. Yeah, San if Francisco. CMC and his calf is still a little nicked up, right, they're going to be in trouble. 
All right, you saw that right there? You saw that? Good. All right, so now, we say they start 0-1, right? <laughs> then they play the Tennessee Titans at Tennessee. Should be Jets win that, right? 1-1. One one. Then they go home to play the Patriots and rookie Drake May that probably won't start. 2-1. and one. So they're 2-1. and one. No, okay? Jacoby Weird Brissett play. will be playing in that game. And then they play the Broncos. Another revenge game with the whole Hackett, Where Sean it? Payton... That is in New York. Okay. With possibly Zach Wilson right? starting. Mm-hmm. So that's three and one. Okay. Then they play the uh, Minnesota Vikings in London. Okay. I'm going with the Jets. I Jets start the season four and one. I just don't like I don't like betting on uh, games when they're international. It's so just it's you, you gotta make a pick. Oh no, I, I already told you my record. Ten and seven. Ten and seven. You keep your tracks on four and one. So then they play the Buffalo Bills. Monday Night Football. Where? Right. In New York. Okay. But, uh, what did I say? The Jets win. So the Jets are 5-1. 5-1. Okay. All right. 5-1. Now they go to Pittsburgh and play the Steelers in Pittsburgh. That's their second loss of the season. 5-2. Okay? okay. Then they play the Patriots again to go to 6-2. All right. Then they play the Texans in New York. Statement game. Six and three. Seven and two. All right. Then they play. Giants fans. He's really a Jets fan. Continue. No, <laughs> <laughs> no but I, I do think, uh, and the reason why, and the reason why I say that, um, actually, no, I'll take that one back. I'll take that one. Back. Texans are six bad. and three. Those but remember, dudes, they man. played C.J. Stroud and they beat him up. So that's where that analysis is really coming from. But you know what? As I think more about it, um, Stephon Diggs is going to be there. That's going to be a hell of a game. It's going to be a hell of a shootout. And so I'm going to give the, you know New York might be a little overconfident in that one. So I'll give him the six and three. Right? Okay. There. Okay. Um, then they play the Cardinals, seven and three. Then they're going to play the Colts, eight and three. Then they're going to play Seattle in New York, 9-3. You don't even believe what you're saying right now. You have, them going <laughs> off, you have them going off multiple streaks. You know the NFL is not like that. Listen. Aaron Rodgers is not coming off of major Achilles sur- surgery, go at, turning in at almost 40 years old, nowhere near the mobility he had uh, that Listen. he once had. Listen. A patchwork offensive line that's definitely they still working. The they are not going to be 9-3. and three. Listen. Listen. You don't even believe I, it. I, I'm looking at the schedule, man. Right? They lose to the 49ers. There's no way they lose to oh, the Oh, how quickly Patriots. some people there's, forget. There's the no knowledge. lose. They lose to the Patriots. No way they lose to the Broncos in New York. Right? Minnesota. You got them sweeping the division? Right? No. They're going to split with the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Right? So then what's coming up? They play the Seattle game. I said they're going to win that. They're gonna, then they go to Miami in December. Right? That's going to be a loss. They always split with the right? Dolphins. Mm. So they're going to lose in Miami. Then they play the Jaguars in Florida. Right? They're going to win that game. Why? Because they've gotten used to the heat. So that puts <laughs> them at 10-4. and four. They're just going on the road and beating all these teams. Then, then they play the Rams. That's a loss. Right? So now they're 10-5. and five. Mm. Then they have the Bills and the Dolphins. Again, one in Buffalo, one uh, uh, at New York. So that's going to split. Jets. 11 and 6. 10 and 7 Bills win the division. Um that's my six. that's my record prediction. So I didn't even have to look at the schedule when I said 10 and 7. You had to count through all those. And then all of a sudden at the end, you're like, oh, you know what? No, they start the only one. losses no, 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 on no, 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 no. Because I had them at only 9 one, and 3. The only one I reverted back on was that Texan game. And listen, you, hey, say this. I gotta tell you, that's not a good finish to the season if you start off 9 and 3 and then finish 2 and 3. Good. I don't, I don't like going into the playoffs on that trend. Good, it will humble them. They'll but win, they'll win the division. They'll have an mm-hmm. uh, 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 early uh, uh, a home game, and they're able to really uh, uh, not go into the playoffs overhyped. Yeah, I got bills, but we'll see. That's why they play the games. So the Giants just wrapped up their, I think it was last week, actually, because the Bears, at the first episode, actually just debuted last mm-hmm. night. So I actually I haven't watched that yet. Looking forward to going and watching it because I think I could be drafting Caleb Williams in my dynasty league. So I'm excited Lord about that. Mercy. I want to go see him. And you know, I want to go see how the young kids looking in camp. You know, and they got to go <laughs> scout the guy. But listen, the Giants hard knocks uh, 
show. I thought, I really thought it was the best Hard Knocks I've seen in 10 years just because they brought a whole new angle to it. They brought you into the GM's office, the moves, uh, conversations with players, looking at free agency. Obviously, you saw the Saquon talks. You saw them go through the draft. A lot of different things. You saw some interaction with the owners, Joe Shane's overall interaction with like his staff, the scouts, things of that nature. And then obviously now we're getting to the camp reports. First of all, I really did enjoy the show. I know you and I view kind of the Giants direction right now somewhat differently. I'm more optimistic about their season next year. Not that I think they're going to be a playoff team, but I think they're going to be in the seven to eight win range. Um, and they just got to show that market improvement for this regime to stick around because I do believe in this regime. Uh, but let me ask you this. Sure. As it stands, do you like the neighbor's pick? Love it. Do you like their other weapons in Wandell Robinson and uh, Hyatt? I like, so Hyatt to me is kind of like a, he's like a poor man's version of a neighbor's. He's really just like a deep threat. He can't okay. really do much off, uh, off of like things where like. He's not a great rock runner. Exactly. Like he's kind of just a one trick pony. Got now it. he's got some explosiveness. He adds a dimension to where he can just keep the defense honest. So, so is it fair to say. But I like Wandell and Neighbors. Deep threat. Sure. And, and Wandell is your route runner for the middle. I Just like that. what Wandell and Neighbors can do because while they're both route runners, they're also extremely dangerous once they get the ball in their hands. They're very good after the catch. So you like their That's receiver? That's what I like about them. Right? Way better than last year. Absolutely. I and think Neighbors is going to be a They made some positive moves on the offensive line. Yeah. Right? And I'll tell you this, without trying to reveal too much, I like the kid that they got from UCF. The running back, I believe his name is Tyrone Tracy Jr. Mm -hmm. He was a receiver that converted to running mm -hmm. back. I like that for a number of reasons. One, doesn't have the wear and tear of a college running back coming into the league. So it's almost like playing a new position. Two, now you know they can go and run a various route trees of a, uh, you know as a running back, mm -hmm. getting out there, getting involved in the pass game. And I like that athleticism of a receiver going to the back. Like I just know that the receivers are usually very shifty with the ball in their hands. So I just know this guy sounds like he could be a dynamic type playmaker. And they're already saying, despite drafting a running back last year, I'm drawing a blank on the guy's name. This guy is apparently now all of a sudden number two on the depth chart. I think this guy could be making some noise before the year is over. But here, here's what I'm leading up to, Go right? Ahead. You like the offense. Sure. Right? I like the defense more. I think the offense defense is still working great, right? Like with yeah. Defense is great. Yeah. Better wide receiver core. Better offensive line. Yes. Granted, the same quarterback. Yes. Imagine if we had Saquon in that backfield. I Just get imagine it. But if you have how Saquon, dangerous that would be. If you have Saquon, offensive threat. But if you don't, if you have Saquon, you don't have Burns, and you don't have a Luminor. And to me, as much as I like Saquon, I, I we I weren't call, winning with them. Can I can I say something? Sure. How in the world did the Philadelphia Eagles were able to give AJ Brown twenty eight million a year, give um, uh, Devontae Smith twenty six million dollars a year, give Jalen Hurts two hundred and fifty five million a year? Right, give Saquon thirteen million a year, and we couldn't find two more million dollars for Saquon, and they have a highly paid offensive line. What are we talking about? Do you really want me to give you the honest answer on that though? Because it's not they're better the until issue, this regime gets more time. They're better run. But here's the difference. I can say that as a Giants fan. Yes, but here's the difference, right? Uh, uh, and this is what I they're took away. Better run organization. This is what I took away from hard. Their owner doesn't meddle. This is what I took away from Hard Knocks. Go ahead. That this Giants regime, this is it, right? Because what I took away from Hard Knocks is that they were highly confident, right? And they did not get their information right, right? Because the owner was just like, it would break my heart if Saquon ended up with the Eagles. Not that if he would leave, if he ended up with the Eagles. And he's like, oh! No chance that's going to happen. Clearly, he was wrong. I think the owner has a very short memory because he's the reason ultimately that Saquon did end up leaving. Listen, the owner is going to blame himself. The owner's never going to blame himself. I get that. Right? That's the bottom but line. The owner pays the general manager for information. Right? Why so did he bring? Accurate. Why did he bring this GM in? Because the Giants were the laughing stock of the NFL. They were an absolute embarrassment. They had Saquon on this team for the past four years, and they still were terrible. He brought someone in. He literally had a press conference saying, what we've done isn't good enough. I have to evaluate everyone in the organization, including myself. If you're going to say that, then you need to live through it and act through it. 
okay? The Giants now have a new regime. This is now going to be year three. I think they actually did a very good job in this draft, but only time will tell. I'm not saying they're going to blow the doors off anybody. I think the defense will be better this year, and I think the offensive line is finally improved. As much as I like Saquon, as much as I do, a team that is struggling and had as many holes as the Giants, you cannot, you cannot justify paying him top of the market money and then continuing to go forward with a patchwork offensive line, getting your quarterback banged up and having a good but not potentially great defense on the other side. Where They've got my more. only disagreement with you yeah. is that he's not excellent at the cap. Why? Because the Eagles are clearly better because they're able to sign. But he came in with a horrible cap. He's just, he's still trying to work through the back ends. Excuses. Play like a champion. Rule 56. What are we doing? 76. What are we doing? Rule 76. Right? Rule 76. 76, 56. I got the six right. All right? Play like a champion. Yes. Okay? But all I'm saying is, I you, get if you're a saying. GM and you can't solve a two million dollar problem, why are you a GM? The cap is two the, million dollars. But the cap is the cap. <laughs> did the, did the cap go up fifteen million dollars? But you can't walk in. Yes, the cap. But when you, you already go on five, what up the fifteen? And you, you can't find two. You forget the first year they had almost no cap room at all. Like he has literally been working and almost from backwards. They're just now fine. This was took the first, job. You're getting paid millions. This was the two. first off season where they could actually go and pay multiple quality players. So here, so this is all leading up to my. Part of my final sure. argument. Guess who's lurking in the wind? Sure. Bill Belichick. Right? So if the Giants crap the bed, I can tell you, right, that they're going to start over. And Bill Belichick is coming in. And I can't promise you that GM is still going to be there. And that coach might not be there. Right? So yeah. that owner might make, make a, might have a full reset simply because, right, Bill Belichick is out there. Listen, if the Giants... Yeah, I mean, like a my, guy like a Mike Vrabel is out there too. But again, I hear you, Bill Belichick. I, I think former, Vrabel is probably going to end up with the Eagles because he has the former there. connection to the organization too. Bill Belichick has made it no secret he absolutely loves the Giants. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I would just, I would just caution against that because look at Bill Belichick after Brady left. The Patriots weren't exactly, you know, be, excuse me, beating the doors off of people either. Listen, so imagine Bill Belichick with with the Giants defense. Now there's offensive talent at the wide receiver position. Bill Belichick has always had a strong offensive line, right? I so, don't think he does pretty well. I don't I don't love Bill Belichick yeah. in the modern NFL. Listen, I don't think he does really well with quarterbacks. If you if you get Bill Belichick an experienced quarterback, all of a sudden it's a whole new day. Yeah, but I mean, who's going to be your experienced quarterback? Let's see what happens next year. Yeah, I just I, I, let's. I, I want to give this regime a chance, man. I don't think they're be given. They're given a fair shake, and I think if the, the Giants are, win, they'll have a chance. What do you mean win, though? Define win for me. If they're better than they were this past season, does this regime come be, back? They have to be. They have to make the playoffs. That's that's ridiculous. So they have to make the playoffs coming off of a six-win season. You're telling me if they win eight games after losing. Their best offensive player. If they win more games, that you than chose they lose. to let walk. If they win, remember when I said you could have traded Saquon last year. If they win more games than they lose last year, even after getting rid of their not best offensive enough. player, but it's better than the year before. But it's not good enough, right? If you're if you go from horrible to terrible. It's still not much better. You just use two words that have like the exact same. You just use synonyms. Listen, it's still very, very bad, right? You got to go from being a loser. Is this better? Is this better? If you go from being a loser to a winner, then you keep your job. But if you're still a loser because you have a losing record, it's a problem. If the Giants have to make the playoffs, if that's how they're being judged, then yeah, this regime is probably gone. Me personally, if I was there, I would actually sit there and go, well, when I was running things and meddling and everything, we were absolutely horrible. I really need to give this regime enough of a chance in time for all the draft picks and all the moves they made to really come to fruition. Here's my argument. You're only as valuable as your next option. And guess what? The other options that are out there are significantly better than what they have. But I look think, at Bill listen, Belichick's record listen, at post Brady. Listen, it's awful. Listen, I think Dave Ball is a hell of a coach. And I think in a different scenario, he would be uh, ex- exceptional. To me, you pair him with the Justin Fields, you pair him, 
you know, with a younger quarterback. Uh, I'm trying to think of a couple. You know, you pair him with uh, uh, Michael Penix or something like that. I think he could really develop. So this is not necessarily shade on Dayball, even though I think he made a bad coaching decision and get rid of Wink. I've said that before. Uh, but guess what? Bill Belichick, he can come, drop six plus, six Super Bowl rings on the table, plus actually, with his Super Bowls from the Giants days. So guess what? Even after saying that, that done for me lately. Listen, it's a hell of a lot better, right? And guess what? The idea would be that Bill Belichick has taken this year off, developed, built a proper offensive staff, and comes in. The and- defensive coach is going to build a proper offensive staff. Yes. Really? Uh, well, what did he show you about that in New England post Brady? That's the idea. And I'm not even a hater on Bill Belichick. Like, I wouldn't be mad at Bill Belichick coming in. The coach is one thing. I'm talking about the overall regime. I think this regime needs more time. That's the bottom line, especially what it walked into. If they're not going to get it, they're not going to get it. Uh, but I do think that if they move off this regime after this year, even if they improve and wins, whether they make the playoffs or not, um, I think it's a huge mistake for the Giants, and I think it sets them back big time. But... The other team that everybody uh, that everybody is obviously very high on, I'm not as high on, the Eagles, okay? They obviously have a ton of talent, all right? But let's talk a little bit about this Hurts versus Sirianni situation. I'm going to let you go first because I don't want to start the segment off by just absolutely well, bashing listen, their head. There coach. was uh, an article that just came out recently that spoke to uh, the collapse that the Philadelphia Eagles had. And basically, in that article, what it pointed out was that Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts weren't on the same page, and their relationship was extremely contentious, to the point that they can't even be in the same room one-on-one. The issue was... Because Sirianni's a dork. The issue was that Jalen had issues with Sirianni's offensive philosophy, right, in terms of how to run the game, how to call the game... It seemed like Jalen uh, felt what like... What does Sirianni do besides cry on the field and then sit there and put, like, thumbs up and talk he crap to other teams? He is the head coach and CEO. He's a dork. And so, but what it seemed like was that Jalen had... Jalen felt like he had to prove his contract. He had to live up to his worth. They went 10-1. and one, But it seemed like Nick Sirianni... It seemed fine when they signed him. It seemed like from the article that Nick Sirianni wanted to keep everything the same because they just went to the Super Bowl the prior year. With a different OC. With a different OC, that is correct. But Jalen wanted to evolve. He wanted to He's the head coach of the Colts now too, right? Yep. Yep. Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen. Uh, He wanted to, um, Jalen Hurts wanted to evolve the offense with the new offensive coordinator, start pushing the ball downfield, right, to, you know, just, you know, develop their game a little better. Uh, but the head coach wanted him to run more, wanted more intermediate passing. And so uh, Jalen wanted to rely on his arm a little bit more. And so that created a lot of dissension. And ultimately, things fell apart as a team. And it seems like they work have a professional relationship right now. But it doesn't seem like it is a very healthy or respectful relationship as it is right now. And when something is that... Um, you know, heated or fueled, you know, there, there's, it's going to explode, right? Maybe they'll finish out the year and have a professional season. Um, but I think there's an opportunity to reset there. And I think they're all going to be walking on eggshells unless the Eagles, you know, go back to the Super Bowl. Well, so listen, I don't think that... Oh, sorry. Last thing I'll say, go ahead. Um, from Howie Roseman's standpoint, this is probably the best team he's ever had, right? Definitely the best offensive weapons Philadelphia has ever had. Sure. So if they don't go to the NFC Championship game and have a strong showing to go to the Super Bowl, it's hard to believe that Nick Sirianni would come back. Well, again, I mean, Sirianni can sit here and have a problem with Hurts, but he better figure out how to check his ego, which I don't know where that ego comes from in the first place. So far, it looks like all your success is attributed to Shane Steichen, who's now a head coach somewhere else, because you haven't had any success since then, or at least the same level of success. That's number one. Number two, uh, Howie Roseman paid Jalen Hurts. So Jalen Hurts is the guy in that organization. So Nick Sirianni, when he's done crying and talking crap to a bunch of different people after he loses in the first round of the playoffs, uh, needs to get on the same page with his 
uh, with his max contract level quarterback. And that team likes Jalen Hurts. I'm not so sure everybody's well, buying into Nick Sirianni. Here's the thing. I think what's interesting, if you look at, you know, articles about Jalen Hurts, he seems like a team guy. Has never, his father's a coach, mm. right? Uh, so for him to... So he probably have, knows how a coach should conduct himself. Exactly. Yeah. But he's always been a, uh, uh, I won't say a corporate guy, but a very, like, you know, uh, um, he's buttoned up, man. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to say it. A very yeah. buttoned up yes. football player that doesn't seem like he. I will. hate the Eagles, but I respect Jalen. Right, like and, I gotta respect him. And I his like thing the way he goes is, is that he business. always wants to work on skills and get better. So to have such a, 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 a tenuous relationship with Sirianni, something more has to be going on there for it to be happening from Jalen. Yeah, I mean, I guess. And- don't cry on the sidelines and don't talk shit at halftime until the game is over. I don't know. So man. listen, so we'll see. But I, I, again, every it, you know, do you, Jalen? Oh, no. Sirianni, actually show us that you're a good coach. Um, I don't think the Eagles are going to be as good as everybody is throwing out. I think they're extremely talented. But the reason I'm saying it is not because I'm a hater, because of everything that you just said in your kind of lead into the topic. If we're walking on eggshells and we got two personalities that aren't figured, like Sirianni needs to kind of figure it out. He's the guy. Like they just paid him a, a hunk of change. So you got to find a way to get along and make it work with him. Here's so. how why I differ, right? What Sirianni did well, he brought in the Dolphins and defensive coordinator. That was a good um, move. But was that him or was that Roseman? It doesn't matter, but he's the defensive coordinator now. And then they brought in um, uh, the young... GM Denver. buys the groceries, right? Listen, the, the the former offensive coordinator from Dallas that ended up going to... Kellen Moore, which Kellen I'm not Moore. crazy about. But listen... I like Fangio. If he replicates what he did with the Dallas Cowboys and how they threw the ball downfield... Um, you but know, he was in San Diego, or LA. He was right. in the Chargers. He was in the Chargers, year. and you know that team, you know, devastated by injuries and sure. whatnot. But remember, um, uh, Keenan Allen had over a hundred catches and in his best year ever. So, um, you know, Justin Herbert didn't have the greatest year ever, but Keenan Allen did. So, you know, Got hurt too, you know, but, yeah. something sort of went right in that situation. So he has two really good offensive. Or sorry, two really good coordinators where he just has to lean on them. And one can argue Nick Sirianni just has to not mess up to have a, 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 a direct line to the NFC Championship game. I just think in general now, too, you want your head coaches, and maybe I'm crazy, it just seems like the head coaches now more than ever, they need to be involved with the side of the ball and play calling. And with the way the league is moving now, it seems that you want your head coach involved in the offensive play calling because you want him to have a solid relationship with the quarterback. If he doesn't have a solid relationship with his quarterback, that's a huge red flag. To and me. listen, I, I disagree with that. I, I think that is the, the, the common trend right now. Um, but what you see in those situations mm-hmm. is that then the defense normally suffers, right? And then what ends up happening is, you know, you then have to bring in a really top end defensive coordinator. So it's like two divisions. You're not the head coach. I know what you're, you're saying. The, you're, the, you're the head coach of the offense, right? And then you have a head coach of the defense. But here's the That's problem. not the head coach of the team. Here's an issue, right? And this is why I say what I just said about the head coach being a play caller on offense. If you get a good OC, right, and he has a really good relationship with the quarterback, what happens? He gets hired as a head coach mm-hmm. by somebody else. It happens less likely with the D.C. Now, D'Amico Ryan's a little bit of a buck to the trend, okay? Former player, player's coach, his players truly believe in him. I get that side of it, okay? Now, it'll be interesting if the Texans have another very good offensive season. Mm-hmm. If their OC leaves, does that mess up with some of the chemistry in them? Yeah. We're not in that situation right now, but he's one of the rare ones. For the most part, though, that has been the trend. If you're a head coach who's more of an overseer and you have a young quarterback and that OC does really well with that young quarterback and the offense performs well, it's only a matter of time before that guy is shopping, you know, shopping around and getting a head coaching offer. That's why I only say, that's why I'm saying if the head coach is going to be involved on the side of the ball in today's NFL, Offense seems to be the more logical standpoint. Yeah, but okay. So let's look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Look at the teams that have the most consistency in winning. You have the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? That's not an offensive coach, right? KC, right? Uh, Kansas City, but he, right? Uh, And he calls plays. But he calls play, right? Looking at the ones that aren't leading offense, right? Then um, it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Look at the Baltimore Ravens. 
right? Okay. Harbaugh's defense. Consistent, yeah. Consistently yeah, yeah, yeah. Consistent yeah. winning, yeah. right? Then, um, let's see. Uh, um, it does it's not a lot. You really got a rack of brain. Yeah. I mean, Bill Belichick is gone. Mike Vrabel is gone. That's right? kind of my point. You know, but again, bo- again, and they're two top candidates for next season, right? They yeah. just didn't take any job. But McVay, right? offensive coach. Uh, Shanahan, offensive Bill coach. Reed, Reed, offensive coach. Outlier. McVay's, hold on. McVay has one. McVay has a Super Bowl. Reed has multiple Super Bowls. Yeah. Shanahan has been. None. Doesn't has matter. Been, he doesn't have any. Has, doesn't have any. What is consistency? He's going. He no, hold on. Any. What is consistency? Because no, 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 no. If we're going to do this, then we're going to do this, all right? Does he consistently win? Not Super Bowls. Does he consistently sure, win? Yes, he consistently So, he has a consistent, successful track record. He just well, hasn't sure, won the big with, one. With no Super okay? Bowls. Continue. But that's three right now already that are on the offensive side. And then, the okay, and who's the others? Uh, Shane Steichen, offensive side of the ball. They are a dropped pass away from going to the division his first year as a head coach. Again, but they uh, didn't make it, right? Okay, let's, let's I'll go to the next one. Doug Peterson, Jacksonville Jaguars. Does he have a Super Bowl? Does he have a Super Bowl? That's what you're measuring it on. He has, uh, he has a cute one. little smile right, right there. Right, he's got one. <laughs> but, okay, conversely, look at um, uh, the Minnesota's uh, head coach. Uh, Kevin O'Connell. Offense. Oh, that's he's what not that's doing anything. But he's not doing anything. Well, last year, he his quarterbacks were all hurt. And the year before, you're, you're an offensive hold on, guru. Why hold on. you can't you can't have a pro, you first can't, year? You can't pick a proper. First year. You can't pick a proper. What uh, did they do their backup? first year? What, what they went they to the playoffs? First? They won the division and and they went to the playoffs. Sure, they lost the playoffs. That was O'Connell's first year. So clearly already showing. And what are last doing? year, last year lost his starting quarterback. Kirk Cousins, who's now starting for the Atlanta Falcons, and he lost what many people, or at least a decent amount of people think, best receiver in the league in Justin Jefferson for almost half the season. And they were still competitive. All right? So all I'm saying is the league is definitely trending towards offensive-minded head and coaches. those guys, but a handful are winning the Super Bowl. That's the point. Right? That, that's what I'm trying to say. Who's got more Super Bowls and more track record for success right now? Offensive coaches or defensive coaches in the current NFL? Hey, I just named you five. You named me okay. one. You bring up Andy Reid. I bring up Bill Belichick. They wash each Bill other. Bill Belichick's out. not coaching. But again, but he's, that's actually a, that's an actually that's a stronger argument in my favor he, he, because he's not even coaching now. It, it, listen, it, he he he, he could have. He's been, so good he it, can't even get a job. No so one what, we can have this <laughs> so we can have this conversation next year when he has a job and then they'll cancel each we'll other see. out. We'll see. Come on, like, we'll listen, see. No. He might not. You don't know that he's gonna have a job next year. All we know right now is nobody wants we'll Bill see. Belichick. We'll see. Nobody wants Bill Belichick. Let's get into the And then all the other guys you named have two Super Bowl, but again, the, the guy... Again. Or a consistent track record of winning. O'Connell is the only one that doesn't because he's only got one season, really, with an actual starting caliber lineup all in and you, you Look at Doug Peterson and the Jacksonville Jaguars. That is sort of... Been to a playoffs, went to the AFC Championship the one year. One good year, one bad year. This year is kind of like the Trevor deciding Lawrence year Trevor Lawrence is supposed to be a great quarterback and you guys can't even have... You couldn't even get Calvin Ridley the ball. What are we talking about? They went to the AFC Championship the year before that and the man has a Super Bowl. Offensive minded. No, that was before Doug Peterson. No, no, Peterson. What? No, Peterson, Peterson was the AFC championship with with the Jacks with the Jaguars. Yes, no. they lost to the Chiefs. Yes, yes. Uh, Do you want to look it up on your phone really quick as we'll, I segue we'll, to we'll the move next on topic? We'll move on yeah. from that. I'm trying to recall that. I don't remember him being the. I, what did I just name though? Five or six coaches though, all offensive minded though. They need to work with their quarterbacks. Okay. There's a recent track record. All I'm saying is right now in the NFL, you want your head coach on the offensive side of the ball because the quarterback is so important, the development of the quarterback. And if you have a good OC and you end up losing him, look at what happened to the Eagles last year. The offense takes a significant step back while Dork over sits over there and cries on the sidelines. Right, let's, let's have to move on because I called him a Dork like five times in this segment. <laughs> go ahead. So, go ahead. We'll, we'll but, see. Let's talk about contracts. Okay. There were some major contracts, all right? So... To a contract, I think it was two hundred and fifty million, two hundred fifty-five uh, million, two twenty, maybe two. And two, in the two twenty, top million. of the market. Yeah, mm-hmm. you agree? Listen, I think I would have wanted to see another year. Oh, there's two. another one, Mike McDaniel, his head coach too. Right, but go on. Uh, you really want to bring him <laughs> four up? Four years, two twelve is his deal. Two twelve. Four years, two twelve. Jordan okay. Love got two twenty. So what's that an average of annually? Uh, right around fifty-five million. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he got right 55. around. 55. And Jordan Love is 55. similar, right? Yeah, Jordan Love was two twenty. 
Yep. Two twenty. Okay. Jordan, Jordan Love was two. Because he's right after two. And don't bring up McDaniel's. I like him, but didn't they just get whooped by the Chiefs in a playoff game? They did. Right. They made the playoffs in his first year. And I'm just saying they made the playoffs in his first year. I said and he, people were wondering all, about. Tua. I said can he's the reason when Tua just got that contract. Who? McDaniel. They weren't even sure if they were going to re-sign him. McDaniel steps in. They have one of the best offenses in the league. Our producer is nodding in the background because he knows. Checkmate. And I don't even play chess. Listen, two is good, right? Uh, if he does it again, we're talking about consistency, right? Yes. I would need to see it again. I, the and you know me. I'm, I'm a man of consistency. Has, Tua has gotten hurt. Now, if you want to say you true. rewarded him, right, and you don't have a better alternative, then that's why they gave him the contract. Sure. But it hasn't been based on performance or consistency of performance. Okay. Well, so let me ask you this. Because if Tua gets hurt this season, I wouldn't be surprised. Would you? No, I would not. All right, then. Now you remember my Cobra Kai joke the year, the, the last year coming into last season when I said, oh, everybody's also high on Tua because apparently he's taking, a, he's watching Cobra Kai and taking jujitsu classes, mm-hmm. learning how to fall. Oh, that'll prevent injuries. But listen, he made it through the year last year. But serious note, I want to ask you kind of a two-part question because I want to get your thoughts on this and then I'll kind of give you a philosophy back. So Tua gets a contract. Love gets a contract. I'm not saying I'm for or against them. So I'll ask this in two ways. One, what does this mean in terms of for Dak? Okay. And then two. All right. So I want you to look at this in multiple and in, in multiple perspectives. Do teams sooner or later? It's like you paid to it because it's just like we don't have any better alternative. You just mm-hmm. said it yourself. Do teams sooner or later start to have? Are, are they going to have to start looking at this? Look at the 49ers, for example. You brought up how Purdy's making 800 grand a year. At some point, is some GM or owner going to have to like put it, put his foot in the ground and go, great, you put up a lot of numbers, you had great stats, but guess what? We get smacked around the playoffs every year. You haven't shown that you can perform on the biggest stage. Why am I going to pay you top of, top of the market dollar just because of your position if we're not getting the results that we're supposed to get? You're a big win, Super Bowl or bust. This is not. So when does it become like that whole thing? So first, I want you to look at it from the DAC so, perspective. What does it mean? Uh, for well, let me say this. Right? I, I want to say that. Sorry, I completely, I throw a lot at you no, no, right I got there. you. But I completely agree with the uh, Jordan Love contract, right? So do I. Um, uh, he, he's deserved. So do I. He sat. You the made second half sign, of that year was very you impressive. You made him sign a prove it contract yeah. at twenty five million a year for two years. He proved it. Pay the man. You did. Wins now a playoff game in his first year as a starter. You know what I mean? And so. Uh, developed throughout the season. Yeah. Um, do I? I the Some reason, Aaron Rodgers esque type plays. Like you could see, he really studied him sitting so, behind him. And exactly. The yeah. reason why I think you should pay him, even though it was on projection for how long he sat, Younger he hasn't too. shown that he has injury issues. Yep. And the fact that he progressed, I right, agree. offensively with such a young team. Agree more he, with him than I do too. Here's the thing: he has no Tyreek Hill. He doesn't. Right. He, doesn't. he has That's no some good young weapons. Jalen no Waddle. Hill. Fair. Right? So, younger weapons, but nowhere near the caliber of what they have in Miami. And so, totally ultimately, agree. that was my argument to where you were going, where I wouldn't have paid Tua, and I would have continued to uh, build. Uh, again, if it was Build pay, everything else. They lost so many if other it things. If pay Tua or keep... Uh, um, Christian Wilkins. Christian Wilkins. Sure. I would have kept Wilkins, mm-hmm. right? Played hard Keep ball everything with, is yeah, exactly. strong so around there. Why am I high on and the Jets? And then strike for that guy. Why am I high on the Jets? Because the Dolphins and the Bills lost more I gotcha. than, the, than, than the Jets, right? Sure. It's not overhyping the Jets. It's that everyone else around them got worse. Right, while they stayed got healthier. And they added you, a Hall of Fame quarterback to a very good defense and a team that has weapons. Exactly. It's totally fair. To answer your other part of the question, what I do love about the 49ers and why I say they have to eventually make some hard choices sure. is because if you pay the quarterback, you then have to lose other high end quality players. Okay? And that's what the Bills are going through right now with Josh Allen. They're losing all their defensive talent. Right, because Josh Allen's contract is kicking in more and more, and they have a hard salary cap. Sure, no, they had to so make a now, bunch of decisions. This looking past at season. the Dak situation, right? I is Vaughn still on the Bills? By the way, he is. He is. Okay. That's the contract that's killing them. 
right? The Von Miller contract, not getting the proper performance out of him. Yep. They're paying him a ton of money, and that's why they ended up he's losing so many up, other defensive he's players, there, yep. right? So, or so far since he's been there. And again, what I do love about the Kansas City Chiefs, their GM gives big contracts out to people that are 29 or younger. If you're 30, has a hard cutoff. Uh, Chris Jones was the exception, and and obviously Travis Kelsey because he's Mahomes, sure. you know, guy. And if you're going for Other that third, you needed Chris Jones. Exactly yeah. right. So to take that philosophy now, if you pay Dak sixty to sixty five million a year, you're going to lose Micah Parsons you or can't, CD. One you, of the two. You can't listen, sign all three. If you lose CD, then there's no point in signing Dak. I totally agree. So if you sign Dak, so you you're have saying to sign basically CD. signing Dak means you sign CD. The priority you, should be to sign CD to whatever he wants, and then see what happens with Dak. But right now, I would secure my future in Dallas. I would secure Lamb, and I would secure Parsons, and build around them. Is what I would say. We agree. We totally agree. If I'm going to sign, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm gonna guys, sign, he's been drinking. But again, I, <laughs> you're so funny. I'm going to sign Dak, the 10th, 12th best quarterback in the league, over C.D. Lamb, who's easily a top five receiver. Micah Parsons, easily a top five, uh, a top five defensive, defensive player. player. Why? And remember, if I'm trying everyone to build forget a consistent, Diggs is that cornerback. Yeah. Exactly. So you have like you, Diggs. you have these cornerstone pieces. If Dak hasn't proven that he can win, why am I paying him? And don't give me the to stay relevant and for the fans. The goal is to win, right? Yeah. The goal is to win a Super Bowl. If you already know that you're not going to win a Super Bowl with him, then why are you going to pay him uh, top of the market value to only lose to lose your, your your best player on the other side of the ball then? Because then you're just keeping him in CD, and you know if you lose Micah, you're only going to take over. You'll still be good on offense. You yeah. won't be as competitive as a team. But but look at that, right? You don't you don't get a Derrick Henry because of this Dak issue, sure. right? So imagine now if you have that same team, but you have Derrick Henry at running back, right? How much dangerous is your offense? And now your red zone issues are fixed with the Derrick Henry. Now here's the thing: you might say like, oh, they I think they allocated about four million dollars at the running back position. Derrick Henry would have required nine to ten. Okay. Well, guess what? Find the money. Take that risk. Go all in. That's usually they didn't. That's Jerry Jones' play, usually. Yes, but here's the thing. I think the issue with Dallas is that, one, they're playing hardball, and they want Dak to prove it. Um, but, two, my thing is um, I don't think they manage the salary cap well. I think they pay they pay all their players too late. They, they pay their players too late, as well as they pay the players they uh, uh, Jerry Jones loves the most. Yeah. Right. And that becomes that the Zeke issue. That Zeke contract was ridiculous. They paid him in September. Yes. But then here's the thing. You do that for Zeke. Why aren't you going to do that for Lamb? Right. He's younger. You know, why are you not going to do that for Micah Parson? Yep. These are younger studs. Top five in their position. Correct. Right. Dak is not top five in his position. <clears throat> is Dak worth 60 million? No. My argument is you let Dak walk <clears throat> and go get a substitute. Right now, if that stay in contention or in the realm with the other pieces that you build around, mm -hmm. and then when the quarterback is there that you like, again, go make your move and strike. Look at Tampa Bay and Baker Mayfield. Right, he took him to the playoffs. He Baker Mayfield won more games than Dak Prescott, and he's only getting paid thirty three million dollars. Right, you're, you're, so can yes. you find a quarterback that you're paying thirty to thirty five million dollars a year and keep C D Lamb and keep Micah Parson and Diggs? and have a better team, and maybe go get a quality running back and have a better overall team. That, to me, is proper team building. Listen, I know I was jabbing at you a little bit earlier, but like I feel like we're actually in total agreement on this philosophy. Why am I going to pay you if you are not... Just because you're a quarterback. That's the only explanation. Well, so quarterback relevancy in the again, fans. So you brought this up. I think the Dolphins will have buyer's remorse. I right? totally agree. If Tua gets injured Especially with what at they all, lost. Exactly. Again, now, if you're telling me you could have Tyreek is getting older, too. You know? That's why you have to stay all in. If you yep. kept you know, Christian Wilkinson and then somehow you structured uh, to his contract a little bit differently, then you would have kept your team intact. Again, I would have liked the Dolphins a lot better, but they lost more. The, to just keep your guys, pay your guys, and then lose better players, your team didn't get better. I agree.
Right? I agree. You're just maintaining. You know? Like if you sit there and Listen, you sign back I th- to me. Again, I thought they would have gotten rid of Waddle. They could have gotten at least a first and a third round pick for Jalen Waddle. And got that, like rebuffed again, on their defense or something. That's sure. a move that I would have done. He's young enough, too. That's exactly. the thing. Where you can actually maximize the draft exactly. capital in return. Exactly. Now you're speaking my language. Exactly. That is yes. what, again, sometimes you have to make sacrifices. You cannot, in the NFL, you cannot let yeah. players walk for free. Yeah. So you have to get rid of them one year too early where your fan base is like, how could you do that, right? If your fan base is just like, man, we lost him, right? It's too late. Yep. This right? is my message to a lot of NFL teams. I think they're doing it the wrong way because I think they're just worrying about putting butts in the seats and making money. I get it. It's about making money. But ultimately, you should respect this because you say it all the time. It's about winning, doing what puts you in the best possible. You're not going to win a Super Bowl every year. That's the goal, but it's just not going to happen. It's not realistic. What can you do to keep your team as competitive as possible from a complete roster standpoint? And then finally, finally, when you're in that position where you like all the other pieces and the infrastructure is there, go strike for the quarterback. That and lastly, what you got to think about is Jordan Love is projecting better than Dak, right? Thousand percent. Uh, Purdy. He's won as many playoff games as Dak already. Jalen Hurts. Um uh, um, uh, Jared Goff, yeah, right. When you start to look at the top end teams and how their quarterback is projecting versus yours, y- you're worried about the Dallas Cowboys. Absolutely, man. So I'm glad that we could actually really find common ground on that one right there because I think we, I think we really see eye to eye there. Let's just talk about this this last topic for today. All right. The NFL came out with their top 100 players rankings, okay? <laughs> it was being talked about all over sports uh, mm-hmm. sports news. Now, listen. I believe number one was Tyreek Hill. I think number two was – I'd have to go and look again. It's on my phone. Here's the point. Mahomes was four. You know who number three was? And I know this is your boy. I know Lamar you like Jackson. It. it was Lamar Jackson. I like Lamar. You like Lamar. I think Lamar's a fantastic player. I can, I'll get into the other thing about why, if you don't want to put Mahomes number one, I'll get into the reasoning why. I don't know if I fully agree with it, but I can at least understand it. Love Lamar. How can you have Lamar in front? And this was apparently voted on by the players. How can you have Lamar in front of Mahomes? Listen, Lamar was having an MVP season. And, great. And, and he had a great season. If I'm not mistaken, all this voting happened before the playoffs, right? Yeah. So if you remember at the time, everyone was assuming that the Baltimore Ravens were going to steamroll everyone and had a direct path to the, uh, what's it called? Direct path to the Super Bowl. Obviously, that didn't happen. So listen, I don't think there ever should be a year that Patrick Mahomes isn't number one. Um, but listen. So you think he should just be the number one player, period? Every single year. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I agree. With, with what he's done, I agree. Someone said this. And, if it's and about winning Super Bowls and like that, that's the main goal. Listen, how can he not be number one? Someone right said now? this, and I think it's perfect suited for Patrick Mahomes. He is the baby goat, right? So Tom Brady's the goat, without a question. But Patrick Mahomes is the is the baby goat. Why? Last year was his worst team ever, and guess what he did? Win the Super Bowl. Right, yeah. so now he's got a he- he's got Hollywood Brown, he's got Worthy out of Texas. Watch out, like Patrick Mahomes is going to throw for five thousand yards this season. Yeah, listen, uh, the guys are in front of him. Okay, maybe some players are thinking we want to vote for actual like they almost like take the quarterback and then say no, we want to vote on the pure most athletic guy. Like we want to vote on the positions where it's the pure athleticism and what they do in the uh, uh, like in a game and their overall athletic skill set. Okay, I still don't agree with it because the quarterback's so impactful on a football game and the outcome of a game, but I can see that. But putting any other quarterback in front of him right now, to me, is just absolutely ludicrous with his resume. Um, But listen, that wraps up this week's episode of Run It Back. NFL is coming back hot and heavy, man. Uh, So we got into a lot of different topics today. But... Beautiful people, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember, I'm going to hold up the right amount of number this time. (laughs) Five-star reviews on all our major platforms. Hit us up in the comments. We'll have reels in there, too, man. Give us that back and forth, man. You know we want that smoke, man. You know we are all about that smoke. (laughs) But I am Shane Mallory with my co-host. Ricky DeCosta. And we will see you next week when we run run it back. back.